uh, instructions for using the critical point drying to seamus machine. Uh, we will start with turning the power switch on the main unit on the right side. The light will illuminate, you'll hear a buzz, and then the condenser unit back left. Both are flip switches. Open the chamber <coughs> and setting the lid to the side and we will fill the unit halfway with 100% ethanol using Teflon spacer. Uh, today we will use that. Another option is glass beads if it's if it accommodates better or if the sample's larger and won't fit with the Teflon spacer. The, um, so we're going to add ethanol. The reason why we use the spacer or the glass beads is to reduce the actual volume of the liquid that has to exchange between the ethanol and the liquid CO2. So we'll need to make sure we dry. Okay. And you took out the O ring space? I did take out the O ring. And so I'm still going to add more glass beads to displace even more. It's not quite to the hole. And it's above the hole. There's a hole to the left side and we need to lower the volume of ethanol beneath that hole. So I've used the glass beads to bring the volume up to reduce the total volume. And then now I'm reducing it even further to bring it below the line. Reduce the volume of ethanol to just below the hole on the left. So it's very important to ensure that this area is very dry. Otherwise, when it advances from cool to fill, it will actually, uh, it's enough space to allow it for the liquid to actually come out of the machine. It doesn't make a good seal, uh, which is not only quite startling, but also can put your sample without having a sufficient amount of ethanol. And then I will make sure that this is O-ring is in good shape and set that back in that spacer. We'll secure the lid and we'll use a diagonal method to tighten the bolts. tightening down. So right now it feels like there no, nothing is continuing to move um, too much and the pressure in addition to them being super snug will make it very difficult to get off. Uh, and you do when you're removing the bolts. It's also important to do it in a diagonal fashion. If you open one too much it'll cause the rest of it to kind of make a seal and you won't be able to open it up. So. We have worked on step two by opening the chamber, filling with ethanol. We've used this Teflon spacer. We placed the samples in the chamber and have covered with glass marbles and ethanol. Um, we use that to bring the ethanol volume 
just beneath the inlet port, which is on the left side of the chamber. It's a very small hole in the steel. Uh, we actually needed to reduce the volume by removing a bit of ethanol as well. We've also completed step three, where we've checked the O-ring seal to make sure it is seated in the groove and free of any debris or ethanol. We've lowered the lids and tightened the nuts snugly, but we're not using anything more than our hands. We're gonna check the log sheet. And we are today on seven. Uh, often we get seven, eight runs from a tank. Uh, it may be that today we will have to make a tank change in the middle of the run. Hopefully we can avoid that, but if so, we'll have it recorded. Uh, we will document on the log sheet uh, once we have the run underway. And then the next step is to open the bone dry CO2 tank. Uh, this type of tank is actually a liquid CO2 that has a hose going down to the bottom where it is liquid. Uh, as the liquid level decreases, of course, the gas in the tank will increase. Uh, and we want to go ahead and open this fully. We want to place the drain hose into the beaker to collect the ethanol as it's replaced with CO2 in the chamber. Based on our sample, we'll make a decision to use either three or four cycles for the purge. The more sample there is, such as a large piece of tissue, we opt for four, but if it's something uh, minimal, like cover slips, uh, then we would choose something like three. Uh, if during the process, uh, when we go further, you can always extend the purge session in the middle. We have the drain hose in the beaker, we've got it covered with a cloth, and we'll advance the system to cool. We have pressed cool. Uh, there is a noise that is associated with this step. Uh, and you can see that it's dropped our temperature to below zero, and it's taken about two and a half minutes just shy of that. Uh, if it takes longer than 10 minutes to do this, it is an indicator that the tank needs to be changed. Our next step is to press fill, and this is the time that you would be able to tell if you didn't have an appropriate seal. So we will advance forward. We have to manually advance that. This also is associated with a noise. Uh, during this time, the pressure will start to increase. You will see the injection of the CO2 liquid. Uh, there will be a, a bubble that gets smaller and smaller, and we want to see that bubble entirely disappear. Where is the bubble located? Uh, you, there's a window in the uh, lid that you can see. Uh, sometimes it requires that you lift the whole unit up to see. Um, currently I'm not seeing one. Uh, I, there should still be one in, in there at this point. Yeah, it's, it's slight. I'm having to rock it. Um, but I do, in this process, do want to continue to see that get smaller and smaller. Uh, so that it's indicated on the thing during this time, observe the sight glass on the chamber lid. The chamber should be free of bubbles, totally full by the end of the fill time, which is approximately two minutes. And we are close to that. The unit will automatically advance to purge. If there is air space at the end of that, we can always revert back to fill to ensure that the chambers... Uh, if there's air space in the chamber, you can revert, if once it advances to purge and you still feel like there's air space in the chamber, you can revert back to fill to see if it'll add any more. Uh, you may 
at that point also need to exchange tanks. So we currently are in the purge setting. This will be when the ethanol is flowing through the tube as a liquid. Uh, you want to continue to see your level stay high. There's usually some movement in the water and the ripples. Sorry, not the water, the ethanol and the CO2 liquid exchange. Um, so you usually see that, that current moving through. Um, and this should take about 20 minutes because each purge is about five minutes. By the end of this time, we should see our tubing change from that clear liquid to being frosted and um, we call it snow, frosty, uh, cold CO2, somewhere like dry ice. Um, and so the tube will get frosted. Uh, you can also uh, use your glove to smell if the liquid still has any ethanol scent to it um, or if it's kind of no scent to it, which would indicate more of the CO2. The so as the exchange continues to occur, uh, the vent hose continues to get more frosted uh, and the liquid turns more and more to a dry, powdery, snow-like dry ice. So when it came to the end of the purge cycle, we continued to see the frosting get thicker and thicker. And so um, it did advance by itself from purge to heat. Uh, the exchange is good when it's that frosty. Um, at this point, now that it's advanced to heat, the chamber will st has already started to increase in temperature. It's uh, up to about 12 degrees right now. We're still at about 800 PSI, but we will expect both of these gauges to go up. Um, whenever you see the pressure gauge, if it were to go higher than 1600, you uh, would certainly want to not take your eyes off this. If it got to 1700, I would bleed just a bit to get it back down. Typically, it ends up being just between 14 and 1500 during this whole process. Uh, the critical point is around uh, 11 or 1200 and the critical point temperature is 31.2 I believe. Um, it will go past that uh, at the end and it will actually go up towards the 40s and will start to decrease. Uh, once the samples have been at above critical point uh, for four minutes. Uh, it's called Tusimus equilibrium. Uh, then you can, at that stage, bleed uh, and let the pressure come down. Uh, the other thing that we'll do here is we will close the bone dry tank completely. So our pressure is above 1400, our temperature has just gone above 31.2. You'll see the temperature advance fairly quickly and we're at 37 minutes. So now I want to make sure we're at least at 41 minutes before I hit bleed. Uh, I typically though will wait until I see the temperature come up and then a, a minute or two after it starts to decrease and usually that's between 4 and 7 minutes. Uh, one other check I should make is to feel that the lid is starting to warm, and it is in fact, and that's indicative that the heat is you know, just a, an outer physical determination that the, the unit is in fact working. Minutes. The temperature has gone up above 40 and is actually starting to decrease. As I mentioned before, I'm going to give it a moment. Uh, or two before I then hit bleed, but that will be the next step. Alright, so we have reached critical point, we have reached critical temperature, 
uh, critical temperatures started to decline and we're at 43 minutes, so we're about seven minutes uh, being at two semis equilibrium. So I will now press bleed, it will make a noise and that persists for a little bit as it's venting. So we have now dropped below 200 for our pressure. Uh, so after we hit anywhere below 400, we can hit vent. And so I will go ahead and do that. And we're at 53 minutes. Anytime after the bleed or the vent step has occurred, you can step away from the unit at that point. Okay, so our pressure is now to zero. We can now release uh, the, the nuts from the chamber lid and remove our samples. So I'm un unloosening, nope, I'm loosening the nuts in the same manner and they all, sometimes they get very stiff and require a lot of torque and so if that's ever the case and you, you loosen one and then absolutely cannot unloosen the others, tighten the other one back and try loosening a different nut. But these are all going smoothly so I can... To finish up with uh, cleaning up the unit, uh, we place the nuts underneath the lid, placing the lid back over the center part. This helps keep dust and other dirt out of the, the uh, sample holder. Uh, we then turn off both the unit and the condenser, and that is all we do.